So this has been another short notice for me, but I look back into something that I've done before, and I think it'll be a blessing. I'm going to try to do it again. You'll turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. While you're turning there, I'm going to talk to you, give you a little bit of introduction into this. Matthew chapter 4 starts out with the temptation of Christ, of the Son of the Devil. After being tempted, uh, after that, Jesus starts his uh, ministry here on earth. Chapter 5 through 7 in Matthew's is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Now, from chapter, from, uh, chapter 5, in verse 3 through 11, is what we call the Beatitudes. Right. And then we go down here, and we start, we're going to look start in uh, verse 14. Chapter, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot not be hid. Neither did men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16 is one we're going to be talking about mostly tonight. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus tells us we are the light of the world. And we are to let our light shine. Before we before we came to know Christ as our Savior, we were actually walking around in darkness. Even when the sun was shining on the, on the brightest, hottest summer day, we were still walking in darkness. And walking in darkness spiritually. And when we're walking in darkness, it's, I want to give you an example of what it means, what it was like walking in darkness. If it was, she told me, really, real dark outside, no light. We turn off all these lights in here, block off the lights in the back room. It would be dark in here. Now, now that we're in light, we just see we can walk around without stumbling around or anything. But it, in that case, if it was completely dark and you got up to start walking around, you'd be stumbling around in the dark. You'd be hitting this wall. You'd be running into the pews. You'd be running over and bumping into each other. And then when somebody turned back on that light, we could see we can make our way back to our pews. Yeah. That gives an example of how we, walk, how we was walking before we come to know Christ, exactly walking in the darkness like that. Spirit. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse 17. Let's run over to this kernel letter real fast. We just stop walking in darkness. Let's get it today. It's, it's, uh, first, it's first John, chapter 8. This one. Then she spake unto them, I am the light of the world. 
He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light and light. But even Jesus here was saying that we was walking in darkness. Now, when we come to know Jesus as our Savior, we're not only walk, walking in light, but we also become a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all things are new. Yeah. That's in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. When we do, when we're new, there's a lot of things we used to do that we don't do no more. A lot of places we don't go, a lot of things we don't do. And it said here in our, our reading of the in chapter, chapter 5, it said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be here. A little bit of light goes a long way in darkness. Yeah. I remember in Vietnam when I was on guard duty, on perimeter guard, we wasn't allowed to smoke cigarettes. Or even when that little bit of puff and when a light on the tip of it glows, your enemy can see it at quite a good distance. They can zero in on you with a weapon. <coughs> I think about a, a highway in between Dale Hart and Dumas, Texas. It's about a 40 mile stretch of road up there. It's pretty straight and narrow, not very well traveled. Coming in from Colorado a few times, several times at night on that road, it would be miles and miles and miles before you ever pass another vehicle. And you could never see nothing. And all of a sudden, out in the far area there, you could see a little light shining. After a while, I'm thinking, of all men, I hope that sure is hoping that business. I'm getting tired of this road. And it gets put on right and right. And by the time we get to it, all it is a little security light out in the farm somewhere. But we could see that, I could see that light for a long distance off. In verse 15, it talks about a candle, lighting a candle, and then hiding. Now, none of us here tonight, I don't guess, ever lived back in a time where they had to use candles before the electric lights. Did you, Miss B? She's shaking her head down. No, Y'all didn't hide it after you lived, did you? No. No, you don't want to hide your life. When we have a power figure nowadays, we don't have to light a candle. We got powerful flashlights and all this and that to use its light. But it is a good illustration of how how we should live our life to let our light shine. And Mark chapter four verse twenty one it says the same thing so as if you hide it under a bushel or a bed. In Luke 8, 6, it says the same thing, so cover it with a vessel or put it under a bed. We, wanna, we don't want to cover up our light. We want it to shine. One reason we want our light to shine so bright is because our light may be the only uh, gospel <coughs> that other people may see. Our life is uh, our life as a Christian should be in such a manner that people realize that we are a believer. I think about a football player from past times football player by the name of Reggie White. He played on the defensive line and he was tough and he was hard to stop. They say every time he stacked the quarterback before he got off of him, he would tell them that he was praying for him because they knew he was going to hit him again. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, was, uh, he was known as the uh, Minister of Defense. 
And he let his light shine even while he was playing on the field and, and uh, hitting his enemies. In Revelation chapter 21, it gives us a look at where heaven's going to be. Let's look at Revelation 21. I want you to see our picture here. In verse 23. Revelation 21, verse 23. And the city had no need of the sun. That's the sun that's in our heaven right now. Neither of the moon to shine it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the lamb is the light thereof. That light we're talking about there is Jesus. The lamb we're talking there is Jesus. He, his light shined through his entire life on earth here. Over 2,000 years ago, his light shined on that old red cross. And it still shines today, and it shines for the Christians. Yeah. We want people to know through our good works in a way that will honor our Father, which is in heaven. When we are alive, shine, we do good work for Him. It's for him and not our God of glory. Amen. Two ways I can think of to keep our light shining. Well, one way, and that's two words, being faithful. Being faithful to the church. Being at the services as often as you can. And we realize there are times when uh, we're going to be missing church services. When there are health problems, you may be on a vacation, or you may be a loved on a sitting inside a loved one's bedside. But when you can't make it to church, be there spiritually. We would take trips, and when we miss a church service, especially on Sunday morning, we'd be on the road and I'd look at the clock. That was about 9.15, after they're opening the door. <laughs> oh, it's 10 till 9 here. And what's this person or that person greeting them? 9 o'clock, the little preacher, the Sunday school lesson starting. Now it's over. More people coming in. I did that all the way through the morning service. I, I, I knew what the standard was. I knew what the sequence was. And, and I was thinking about it when I was driving down the road. Luckily, I didn't have no rip because I was paying people what I was doing. <laughs> Another way to be faithful is to uh, read your Bible daily. You gotta uh, have this bread. It's a good devotional way of doing reading your Bible on a daily basis. And if you read it every day according to the way the scripture is outlined, by the end of the year, you will read the Bible through in the whole in the, in the year. Now there is another outline where you can go through to do that, but they don't have that devotion there to help guide you. Prayer. Pray to you. Not necessarily for the things you need in your life, even though they may be important. Pray for the church. Pastors, your church family, lift up those who are on their prayer requests and prayers. Do God's will in your life. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Let's look at that real fast. Starting in verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7.
But the manifestation of the Spirit was given to every man to profit with him. For to one is given the Spirit, by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge, by the whole same Spirit. To another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another the verse of kind of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these work at one and the self same spirit, dividing to each man's service uh, super as he will. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members, for that one body being many are in one body, so also is Christ. They're talking about the spiritual gifts there. Now many of us may not realize that each one of them has some kind of gift that God can give us. We got some that can lead singing. We got piano players here. We got teachers. We got people who is willing to come in and mow the yard. We got several groups of people who come is willing to come in and claim the church. And all this is important. Now, all this is an important work of God in this house. Amen. And this and what we do here. I want to tell you a little story about the light. I heard it some time back. I don't remember where I heard it at. There was an elderly man that was in church. He was faithful to the church for many, many years. Then there were about two or three weeks there in a row he didn't come to church. So one night the pastor of the church decided to go visit the man. It was a cold night and went and knocked on his door. Men laid him in. He had a fire built in his fireplace. Pastor went in, they sat down in front of the fire, and they just sat there looking at the fire. Not a word was spoken. After a while, the pastor realized there was a little piece of wood like that burning off to one side, and he got the poker and he pulled it away from the fire. They started watching them. After a while, the flames started getting lower and lower and lower. Pretty soon, the flame went out. Then it turned black, dark or gray, and then the light was. Pastor took the oka, put it up against the fire again, and they started watching. Pretty soon that piece of wood was starting to glow again, and pretty soon it was flaming. The preacher got up, walked in the door, looked at the other man, and said, I'll see you Sunday. Mm -hmm. What a message without saying anything to say, I'll see you Sunday. Mm -hmm. What a lesson about our light shining. Mm -hmm. I heard that, I remembered it. I thought it would be a proper thing to say tonight and tell you so. Because we just talking about the rock shining. It's kind of short and sweet. But then it had a, I was, like I said, I received a short notice. And uh, I felt like this was just something to do that I've done. Like I said, I've done it a year uh, before. I've done it about two years, a little over two years ago. And uh, I practiced it this afternoon, and I was glad to do it tonight. I pray, I pray that it was a blessing to you, maybe you learned something tonight.